and welcome back. Tonight or today, we're going to cover the PTCB practice questions, okay? This video is being brought to you by LW Pharmacy School, and this is the video that I promise you guys we will get every Wednesday at 1 o'clock p.m., okay? Um, LW Pharmacy School is serving you through education. Our phone number is 903-295-5933, extension 101, okay? We're going to jump into it. You guys have been calling us from all over the world. We're getting calls from Pakistan and Poland and Egypt. And so hi to all of my friends who are overseas, as well as all of my friends who are locally um, in the country and are local in Texas. Um, hi, and thanks for calling and like sharing your feedback with me. I really, really appreciate it because the more you share, the better I can be and the better we can do with the board exam, okay? Um, PTCB, so let's talk about this real, real quick. PTCB test is called the Pharmacy Technician Certification Exam, okay? Let me cut my ring off so nobody won't call. Um, this exam is, consists of 90 questions, 10 of which are not scored. Okay, if for any reason a candidate has been convicted of a drug or pharmacy related felony or has any felony conditions during the five year before applying for the board exam, he or she does not qualify. So I've gotten some calls about what about my background? What about this? So figured I would put this out there for you all. If you've had some type of trouble or you've gotten into some type of issues or incident, um, you want to check with your local board. Don't just take this for, you know, face value or don't take this as this is what it is. You just really want to check. Um, but again, I did get this information straight from the uh, from PTCB, but check and just make sure don't get discouraged. Um, if you have a high school diploma or a GED, you are eligible for the board exam right now. OK, you do not have to go to a school. You do not have to go to school in order to take the board exam in 2019. All of that is gonna change in 2020. In 2020, they will require you to go to a PTCB recognized school as like LW Pharmacy School, or they will require 500 hours of clinical time inside of the pharmacy. Those are the new laws that are gonna take place January 1, 2020. Uh, to maintain your PTCB certificate once you pass your board exam, you will need to renew your certification every two years. You're gonna need 20 continuing education hours to do that. And your educational hours must include at least one hour of pharmacy law. Let me make that change. You know why that PowerPoint didn't want to act right. Anyway, it must include at least one hour of pharmacy law, okay? Um, and then one hour of medication safety as well. Uh, let's go on. The next, the first question that we're going to talk about tonight. So let me just back it up if you just now joined our uh, video. First of all, if this channel has helped you and has helped you to pass the board exam, um, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. Tell your friend, tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your cousin, tell everybody that you know that LW Pharmacy School is helping you pass your board exam. And anybody you know who is interested in passing their board exam, send them our way. We want to help everybody. Don't be stingy. Don't just keep us to yourself. Tell everybody about us, okay? Um, so we're just going to go over some basic questions. This is going to be a quick video. This is not going to be something real, real long. I have about 12 slides or so, and I want to get through them as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, thumbs up this video and give us a like if we are helping you ASTEP, PTCB, or EXCPT exam. Boom. Um, OTCs behind the counter, okay? OTCs behind the counter is any drug that uh, pretty much has pseudoephedrine in it, okay? So the question says, which of the following OTC medication is sold behind the counter and only a controlled amount can be purchased per month, okay? Is it Robitussin DM? Is it Zyrtec? Is it Benadryl? Well, the answer is a Lager D. Ding, 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 ding. You are correct, okay? If it is an OTC behind-the-counter drug, they are only allowed to purchase 3.6 grams a day and 9 grams a month. They must be 18 years of age, and they have to show ID, okay? Day supply. Now, this is going to be about day supply, okay? And some of you guys are kind of like, getting a little screwed around with this. This is going to be fun and quick and easy. Math is not the uh, majority of the test. So if you are only practicing and studying math, ooh, you're doing the wrong thing. 
you should not just be practicing and studying math by itself. You should make sure that you are incorporating all of the subjects that are covered on that PTCD uh, blueprint to ensure your success on the exam. And you can always give me a call and I'll, I don't mind, you know, gauging and helping you to figure out where you are and what you need to study and what you really need to put more of your energy towards, okay? Uh, a prescription is written for Lexapro, Lexapro 7.5 milligrams twice a day. If Lexapro is, if Lexapro 5 milligrams is dispensed, what quantity is needed to fill a 30-day supply, okay? Lexapro is the brand and the generic is here. You, you notice it ends in P-R-A-M, P-R-A-M. It's the word stem for that generic drug, okay? Back to the problem. So uh, Lexapro, the doctor wrote it for 7.5 milligrams twice a day. We underlined that, that's important. We at the pharmacy only have Lexapro 5 milligrams. And so we need to know how much or what quantity needs to be dispensed in order to uh, have enough medication for 30 days supply. First thing I would do is I'm going to do 7.5 times two, okay? And I'm doing it times two because it's twice a day. That gives me 15 milligrams. That tells me my daily dose or my dose per day, okay? Um, in order to get 15 milligrams and I only have five, I do five times three. And that tells me three tablets is needed per day, okay? That's something you can do. Um, and then I just simply multiply by 30. And it gives me 90 days supply, okay? Not too hard, not too easy, right on point. This is what you'll see in the pharmacy um, in retail when you are uh, practicing as a certified technician or even on your board exam, okay? So don't sleep on the retail calculations. Top 200 drugs. Which medication is used to lower cholesterol? Lower cholesterol. Oh my God. The cholesterol word stem is statin. And if you did not get this right, it's okay. Don't worry. You know, don't be so hard on yourself. But now you know that all cholesterol medications, for the most part, the word stem for their generic is statin, okay? We know that OLOL is beta blocker, so we know that it never would have been metoprolol because that's beta blockers, okay? So again, the drug stem or the word stem for cholesterol medication is a tour of a statin. I'm um, sorry, that is the generic. And then the stem is statin, S-T-A-T-I-N, okay? We want to get that, that cholesterol lowered statin, stat, right away, right? The brand is Lipitor. Ah. Okay, we're gonna go to the next one. Metric conversions. How many milliliters are in a three or in three ounces? Okay, I have had some friends who are struggling with this on Facebook, as well as some of my friends on YouTube. Hey, that is okay, it is okay. First thing we wanna figure out, it says how many milliliters, okay? So we're gonna underline how many, just so we'll know. And then three ounces, okay? So we need to know, and then ML, almost the whole thing, whole little question is important, okay? You need to know that one ounce equals 30 mLs. One ounce equals 30 mLs, okay? So if we have three ounces, we just do 30 times three, and our answer is 90, okay? One tablespoon is five mLs. One fluid ounce is 30 mLs. One cup is 240 mLs, which is eight ounces. And then one gallon is 3,840 mLs, okay? One teaspoon, five mLs. Fluid ounce, 30 mLs. One cup, 240 mLs. One gallon, 3,840 mLs, okay? I had to say it twice for the people in the back, okay? I wanna make sure you guys are hearing me today because we're gonna pass that board exam. Let's boost the confidence, okay? Pharmacology. What is the most serious side effect of opioid analgesic? Is it respiratory depression? sedation, nausea, or constipation. Let's use some common sense here. If you get constipated, is that really a serious side effect where we have to rush you to the hospital? When we think serious, we want to think about something that's going to send a person to the hospital or to the emergency room, right? Constipation, no. Okay, typically no. Um, nausea, yeah, that's pretty common. Sedation just means that you're kind of sleepy, you're groggy, you're drowsy respiratory depression 
means that this person is breathing very slow and ineffective. It's serious. We're going to the emergency room, okay? So the answer for this one would be respiratory depression, okay? Remember that oxycodone is a C2 drug, which means that there is no refills on that drug at all whatsoever, no refill, and, and, and. and oxycodone is a C2, okay? So when you think about an opioid analgesic side effect is going, the most serious one would be respiratory depression. Please know that all of these are side effects, but what is the most serious one, okay? Make sure you're paying attention to key words. Keywords, most serious, not side effects, most serious. Uh, Poison Prevention Pre Poison Prevention Packaging Act of 1970. Now we're talking about some drug laws. Uh, which medication is never dispensed in a child-resistant vial? Is it penicillin, enilapril, lorazepam, or nitroglycerin? If nitroglycerin, ding, 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 ding. Now, nitroglycerin is used to treat chest angio, which is chest pain. So if a person is having some type of chest pain and they need to get to their medica medication very quickly, we don't want this little cap to prevent them from doing that, right? We want them to be able to get to this medication real quickly. Remember that this particular drug is uh, sublingual. And so it goes underneath the tongue and it dissolves very quickly. Right, because we need to get it into their bloodstream right away because they are having some type of chest pain and we do not want to prolong the issue at all. Penicillin, remember that psyllins are um, going to be antibiotics, right? We remember that psyllins are antibiotics and psyllin is actually the uh, category, okay? And it also ends in psyllin. And then prill, the category for PRIL is going to be ACE inhibitors, okay? And then we know that PAM is going to be anti-anxiety, right? So I just figured I would kind of like throw that in there so you guys can kind of know. NGT is a abbreviation for nitroglycerin. I'm glad you asked me. Lindsay, what is NGT? It is the abbreviation for nitroglycerin, okay? Um, let's go to the next one, over 90. Here's a tricky one. A patient asks you about the possible side effects of a medication. You search the internet for the answer, advise the patient to contact her physician, refer the patient to the pharmacist, advise the patient to contact the manufacturer. We are going to go with C. We never as technicians give counsel whatsoever. Patients will try to pull you in and you're like, no, I can't do it. I just cannot do it. No, I can't, can't no, sorry, uh, no, okay. Uh, over 90 is the law that requires that a pharmacist give counsel to any um, patient that may be receiving Medicaid or Medicare, um, any type of government assistance insurance they have to give or at least offer it. They can't force it on them, but they must offer it to the patient because it is a government law, okay? Uh, sterile compounding. Which medication always uh, must always be compounded in a vertical laminar flow hood? Is it TPNs? Is it antibiotics? Is it antivirals? Or is it chemotherapeutic drugs? I'm gonna go with chemotherapeutic drugs because chemotherapy is a hazardous drug and hazardous drugs need that air to flow right down on top of them. So that way it can kind of lessen the exposure for the person who's compounding, okay? So chemotherapy must always be compounded in a vertical laminal flow hood where the air blows down. Horizontal blows towards you, vertical flow hoods blow down, okay? You remember that vertical flow hoods must be certified every six months. Before you start working in the vertical flow hood, it needs to be clean and it needs to run for 30 minutes prior to you compounding, okay? 30 minutes prior to you compounding needs to be recertified every six months, okay? When you get ready to compound in the vertical flow hood, you are going to clean it before you compound and after you compound, okay? Oh, you can thank me by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our YouTube channel because I know that we're helping you and we are boosting your confidence, all right? Tonight we're talking about, or today we're talking about PTCB review questions that will help you pass that board exam, okay? I want you to remember this in such a way 
where when you are at the test and you're taking your test, you're like, Lindsay, I heard your voice. I remember what you told me. That's how I want you to remember this, okay? We're friends. We're going to pass this test together, all right? Don't even worry. Don't even worry. Dosage form. Which of the following is a semi-solid medication dosage form that is applied to the skin or mucous membrane? What is it? Is it a cream? Is it an ointment? Is it a lotion? Or is it a paste? Oh, ding, 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 ding. It's an ointment. Okay, remember the ointment is to be applied to the skin or the mucous membrane. Okay, dosage form. Semi-solid. These are semi-solid dosage forms. Okay, which means that they are semi-solid. They're not all the way solid. They're not like a tablet or a capsule. Medication safety. Which of the following is not a high alert medication as defined by the ISMP? Who is the ISMP? The Institute for Safe Medication Practice. They are here to make sure that every medication on the shelf is safe and that it is being given in a safe manner, okay? Medication safety is something you want to know to pass your board exam. And the answer is B, which of the following is not, is not. See, somebody just got this wrong. Well, you got it because you didn't pay attention to the, the key word said not, okay? Which, uh, maybe I need to put it in all caps. Uh, 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 uh. Let me see. Not, uh, oh, oh. Okay, let me see here. Which of the following is not a high alert medication as defined by the ISMP? Not is the key word. High alert. So what that means is if Lomatil is not, then that means heparin, insulin, and the last one is a high alert medication. Remember, these things that you are doing is not rocket science. It's just you have to apply yourself to make sure you remember it the best way that you know how. Okay, if you need help with your math, if you need help with your pharmacology, if you need help with non-sterile and sterile compounding, if you need help passing this board exam, because you're not sure, call me, 903-295-5933, extension 101. I will answer the phone. I had a friend, a YouTube friend about a week ago, called and she said, oh my God, Lindsay, I didn't even think you were going to answer. I thought you were just telling us to call and you were not going to answer. No. Y'all know that I am real and transparent and I keep it 100% with you. If I tell you to call, call me. I want to talk to you. Even if you don't book a session, let's talk. Tell me what's going on. I want to know, like, what are you doing? What are you, what are you studying? You know, and I'll try my best to answer all of your questions. If you want to see more videos like this where I am going over review questions and showing you how to do it, drop me a comment below and say more, Lindsay, more, 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 and I will give you just that, okay? Um, I have sessions available. I am working with people all over the world to pass this board exam, and I am super proud of what we've done. We already have more than half of our YouTube followers who have passed this board exam watching my videos. If these videos have helped you, if this video has answered some of your questions, give us a thumbs up. Ring the bell so you can get a new notification and subscribe to our channel. I want to see you, okay? Real quick before I get out of here, let me tell you something. When you get ready to take your board exam, this is what I want you to do. I want you to give your, within the first 30 minutes of you sitting down taking your board exam, I want you to only answer questions that you're confident with, okay? That means that when you answer the questions, you want to be able to get the answer to this question within 15 seconds. Give yourself 15 to 30 seconds to answer the question and to know it, okay? It's almost like you say, that, that shirt is purple, and I know that shirt is purple. If you cannot answer the question with confidence like that, go to the next one, okay? Do not spend your time when you are taking this test getting caught up on questions that make you feel incompetent or inadequate about this exam. It is so important that within at least the first 30 minutes, of you taking this board exam that you only answer questions that you know that you know that you know that you know okay it has to be like this shirt is purple and i know this shirt is purple and nobody can tell me that this shirt is not purple that's how sure you need to be about your answer okay so in the first 30 minutes of your board exam only answer questions that you know then you go back over it again only ask the questions that you know. And I want you to use that method from the beginning of your board to the end, okay? You need to walk away feeling like you aced it. You need to feel as good as you possibly can. And what you are doing in those first 30 minutes is you are giving yourself a confidence boost that can't nobody take away from you, okay? And so you do that, okay? 
Make sure that you only answer questions that you know. If you get stuck on a question, you will be on question 25, still thinking about question three. Y'all know that I'm telling the truth. And that's when you get tricked up because the brain is still trying to figure out what happened three pages ago and now you're on this page. Only answer the question that you are comfortable with, okay? All right, well, it has been real. I always enjoy working with you guys. To, today has been a great day. And I know that when you go and take your board exam, if you keep watching these videos, when you go and take your board exam, you're going to be confident enough to pass, okay? Keep doing what you're doing. Don't doubt yourself. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw the towel in. Don't call. The fat lady has not fun yet, okay? You got this. I'm going to help you. I'm here with you. I've been here. And I'm not going anywhere. We're going to get this until you pass that board exam, all right? Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to this video. Ring the notification bell. And I'll see you next Wednesday in the same place at the same time. Have a great one. And I am rooting for you. You can do it. Thank you. See you soon, okay? Bye.